right, welcome back. We're gonna tie an egg laying black caddis. What I have in the vise is a size 20 uh, dry fly hook and then I've got 18-0 simper fly. I'm just gonna start my thread behind the eye of the hook and just work it back slightly into the thorax, basically where I wanna start my hackle. And we'll just trim that thread out. Next, we're actually gonna do the uh, egg laying part and this is a reasonably easy way for some of you that have maybe have larger fingers uh, or cannot dub uh, well onto small flies. Uh, what I'm using here is Arizona semi seal in chartreuse and uh, we're just going to take this and start to pull it and separate it, pull it and separate it until we have everything lined up. You need a longer fiber dubbing to do this um, on these small hooks. You might be able to get away with Antron or something like that. And, uh, but we just don't need much. And so you can see this was all, I basically divided that clump in half. Now the best way to go about this is just take a piece of wax and rub your fingers on it. So your fingers are sticky and start to twist this together until we have basically a dubbing rope kind of like so. Now you want to make sure you get into the thicker part. Don't tie in on this kind of tail. You can actually trim that out first if you'd like. And we're just going to start to tie that in just like so, working back until we get to the barb. And now when you get to the barb, you can actually just fold this over and uh, twist it together again if you want the egg sac part to you know, stick out the back and kind of float. Uh, or you can take this and wrap it down into the bend just a little bit and then back forward. I'm gonna go ahead and jump my thread up out of the way. Now at this point, we can take this and just wrap this dubbing around the hook instead of using thread because it's all waxed together and it's the longer fibered material. It can be a little tricky, but uh, if you have that wax on your fingers, you can just kind of hold it in place. To get your little egg sack in there. And then we can back this off. Now for the body, you could uh, do like a biot or um, dubbing if you wanted to. I'm just gonna use thread. I don't think it's necessary to add any extras per se. I'm just wrap this in right on top. Coming back forward until I've got both lined up and we'll just trim this out. Very cool. Now if you want to clean this up, you can pinch and pull. Bring your scissors in, however you want to groom it. It's up to you. And now we've got a little egg sack. For the wing, I'm gonna use uh, some EP fiber in gray. This stuff sheds water reasonably well. A lot of the times it's overlooked for a dry fly. And you just wanna kind of, you may have to play around with this a little bit to see exactly how much you need. These flies are typically tied between 18 and 22, uh, cause that's typically about the size of a uh, black caddis. They're, they're fairly small. I'm just gonna take this and just lift it up underneath my thread, place a couple of wraps in. Coming forward, I'm still a little too far to the back. There you go, that's a little better. So I'll place a couple of wraps to the back, fold it over, place a couple of wraps to the front, and just start to build a little ramp for my hackle. I have a hard time doing this because I gotta move around. I can't do it from the opposite direction, but you want the wing to come out just past the bend of the hook. So I'm just gonna take this, I'm not even gonna cut it, I'm just gonna kind of slice it. So it stays a little bit messy, kind of like an elk hair caddis. 
I just can't do it from the other direction. I've tried a couple of times. And normally the camera's not in the way. So there's the wing. That's easy enough. And then I've just got a midge size grizzly hackle here. And we'll just kind of prep this the normal way. We're gonna pull some off each side. Let me just tie this in, coming from the front to the back, just making sure that that, that the uh, barbs line up with the wing. And that, don't worry about that drop off too much. And just fold that stem over to help build the ramp. And if you can see the stem, which is right there, you can come in and trim it out. Let's bring our thread forward, make sure it's out of the way, and now we can hackle the fly. Coming forward, and again, if there's a drop off, don't you don't have to worry about it too much. Having a, a little bit of mess to this is not a big deal. Uh, and with the wax on your fingers, you can just kind of draw everything to the back. Let's back this off a little bit. Okay. Uh oh, maybe I'll back off just a turn. There we go. That's pretty good. Sometimes you get excited and get too far up there. I'm gonna start to build the head. And then I got that one barb sticking out. We can clip that off in a minute. Make sure you come over and check us out at Fly Vault. We're uh, getting a lot of members to come over, and we're adding patterns daily. We've got we've had the vault up and running now for uh, about ten weeks, and we have about two hundred and ten patterns in there. And it's the as far as we know, it's the first of its kind uh, digital fly tying archive. Uh, and that just means that uh, not only can you store your patterns, but uh, everything is 100% researchable, including your name. That's how you store it, as well as every material, on it, every fly that goes in there. So uh, there you go. That's how you tie, uh, or a way to tie an egg-laying caddis. Uh, for those of you that may have uh, some larger fingers and struggle with dubbing and uh, putting a dubbing ball in in that smaller degree. So other than that, everybody, happy tying. Take care, and I'll see you next time.